This is Tradeflow News, bringing you relevant news and insights from around the world. Tradeflow News, enabling trade for SMEs and economies worldwide. These are some of the key topics that we will be looking into in today's program. First, let's take a look at the overnight headlines which are impacting the commodity markets. OPEC Plus is likely to stick to the existing pace of gradually easing oil supply curbs at a meeting on Tuesday, OPEC sources said, as producers balance expectations of a recovery in demand against a possible increase in Iranian supply. The Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries and Allies decided in April to return 2.1 million barrels per day. BPD, of supply to the market from May to July, as it anticipated global demand would rise despite surging coronavirus cases in India. Oil has extended this year's rally since the decision and has gained over 30% in 2021 to $68 a barrel. Still, the prospect of higher Iranian output as talks make progress on reviving its nuclear deal with world powers has limited the upside. China gave five state-owned companies until Thursday to report on their historic use of imported oil as part of a broader effort by the world's largest oil importer to control shipments as domestic supplies swell. In an urgent notice dated May 25 and reviewed by Reuters, the National Development and Reform Commission requested that Sinopec Group, China National Offshore Oil Corp., Sinochem Group, Chem China, and China North Industries Group provide years' worth of information on their crude usage since they began importing. Specifically, the companies must say whether they have resold crude to other companies in China and whether their imports have been processed at refineries under a tolling scheme that reduces the company's tax payments. Moving on to the top news in the energy sector. The Department of Homeland Security issued a new security directive for pipeline owners and operators on Thursday after a hack of the Colonial Pipeline disrupted fuel supplies in the southeastern United States for days this month. The recent ransomware attack on a major petroleum pipeline demonstrates that the cybersecurity of pipeline systems is critical to our homeland security, DHS Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas said in a statement. Owners and operators of critical pipelines will be required to report confirmed and potential cybersecurity incidents to the Department's Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, CISA, and designate a cybersecurity coordinator to be available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, DHS said. The European Union will look at hitting Belarus's big potash exports as well as its oil and financial sectors with new sanctions, as punishment for forcing down a Ryanair flight to arrest a journalist, EU foreign ministers said. European leaders have described Sunday's incident, in which a flight between EU members Greece and Lithuania was pressed to land in Minsk and a 26-year-old exiled dissident and 23-year-old student were arrested, as state piracy. They have promised to impose serious consequences. Foreign ministers gathering in the Portuguese capital on Thursday said they were looking at targeting sectors that play a central role in the Belarus economy, to inflict real punishment on President Alexander Lukashenko. Next, we have the top news in metal markets. Copper and other industrial metals prices rose sharply on Thursday, helped by strong U.S. data, the threat of strikes at mines in top copper producer Chile and an easing of fears that China, the biggest consumer, will tighten monetary policy. Benchmark copper on the London Metal Exchange, LME, was up 2.7% at $10,244 a tonne at 16.05. Prices of the metal used in power and construction surged to a record high of $10,747.50 this month before slipping to $9,795 on Monday. Asia's iron ore benchmark recovered on Thursday after hitting a more than six-week low, buoyed by easing concerns about a crackdown on speculative trading, while soft profits by industrial sector kept worries over policy tightening by top steel producer China at bay. Iron ore on China's Dalian Commodity Exchange ended daytime trading 1.1% higher at 1,046 yuan and 50 fen, $164.10, a ton, after earlier falling to 985 yuan, its lowest since April 12. On the Singapore Exchange, the steelmaking ingredient surged 5.6% to $182.10 a ton by 0725 GMT after touching a more than five-week low of $170.50 earlier. We will now look at the top news in the agricultural sector. 
Saudi Arabia's main state wheat buying agency, the Saudi Grains Organization, SAGO, on Thursday issued an international tender to purchase about 720,000 tons of wheat, European traders said. The deadline for submission of price offers in the tender is Friday, May 28. Results are expected on Monday, May 31st. Hard wheat with 12.5% protein content is sought in 12 individual consignments of about 60,000 tons each. The wheat can be sourced from optional origins. That is all for today's news on commodity markets. Stay tuned to Trade Flow News as we continue to provide you with more updates. We also invite you to follow us on Twitter at Trade Flow News, which allows you to watch our program on your mobile device or desktop to receive information from there.